Welcome back guys. What's up YouTube? We got a new edition of the old school series and what an edition it is. We're gonna look at 5, 10, no limit, thousand dollar buy-in. Of course the last year, yes the first year I played poker, you already saw me dabbling in some 5, 10 but that was clearly because I was tilting. Now we're gonna actually look where we got their grinding and I do want to uh, give the disclaimer again because uh, in the last uh, uh, few videos or at least a few videos ago uh, we discussed bankroll management back then bankroll management was very fickle so you would use 10 15 buy-ins for a certain stake and that was a normal stakes to grind of course the swings were a lot less low you could mostly only play like four or five tables um, so it was uh, it was a different time back then but uh, I do feel like our skill progression kind of matched it, you know, but the problem with poker is a lot of people say I'm good enough for the stakes. I want to play it. That doesn't work like that. You actually have to have the money to play it because there's this little thing called variance. There's a luck factor. You can run bad eight sessions in a row. If you lose all your money, then you're out. You're out of action. You're no more. You're gone. Um, so that is, uh, that is something you want to keep in mind. Now, what we have here is the top 50 of the 510 no limit hands actually they're in order so um these first few hands is from oh my god this one is from february Ugh. so this is a tilt hand the first few are tilt the first three are tilt hands i'll give you those as bonus all right we might we might have seen them in a tilt edition somewhere because we did some bonus tilt sessions you know what I'm going to give this young Lex here pro props because if you, well, <laughs> all right, let's be real. If you play higher stakes, that's always my thing. When I used to play high stakes that were too high, I would still play really aggressive because that's what I always say on stream too. When somebody says, hey, I normally play $50 tournaments. I qualify for a 1K WSP event or this 1500 live event somewhere. How do I play? At least make people's time hard. Do not start playing too passive because if you play too passive, they're going to eat you alive. You're going to chip away at you and you're going to have a short stack before you know it. So I'm not saying that you should tilt or space pewy, but if you can go both ways, I would go to the side of the aggression because aggression is really hard to play. Even if you're, you know, a professional player versus a recreational. So in a nutshell, I like this. It's a little bit big. Yeah, we could have just gone 160. So it's a little bit spazzy, but I like it. Um, am I doing it for the right reasons? Probably not. I was probably just fucking mad. All right, so he flats, and I just decide to jam it in. Um, yeah, this... <clears throat> Still trying to come up with stuff why this could be good. I could have diamonds. You know? I could have 10-9 uh, of diamonds. And play it like that. You know what I mean? So, great stuff. And we got called. <sighs> that is pretty brutal, though. That is pretty brutal. I don't say that we should... Oh, dead. Zero. I don't say that we should win these type of hands, but that's pretty brutal. To have it go... To make somebody 6x preflop. We go to 230 and get called. But then again, you know... You got what you deserved, okay? You know what's the bigger problem? I think that when I look at my friends, and um, I have one friend, I would I won't name him, but he's a very known poker player. And he he was grinding, like, sit and goes, tournaments, everything. He was pretty good at everything Hold'em related. And then he started playing Limit Hold'em. And Limit Hold'em is such a different kind of game. And the first day he played it, he played 100-200, and he won, like, 16K. He won on an insane rush. I think over the next few years, he lost 150, 200,000 playing 100, 200 limit hold'em because he still remembered that first rush. I honestly think when people go to the casino, for instance, and they play roulette for the first time, they should get fucking crushed or at least lose what they had with them. You know, I mean, you don't want anybody to go home. Super painful, but it's probably the best. So same thing here. This is fucking February. It's good. Oh, no, this is fucking... Yeah, sorry, man. It's the that's the uh, the American uh, date system, I you know, because in the sen in the sensible countries we do small, medium, large, day, month, year. But you know, let's do medium, small, large. All right. Um, so this is uh, this is from July, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that these were tilt hands because oh, June. 
in June I wasn't playing 510 yet. So we saw that I started playing 3-6. And two four in August, 3-6 in uh, in uh, November. So uh yeah, you got what you deserved. That's what I'm saying. Alright, um Okay, 240. Uh you know, this is the this is the classic situation. This is the classic situation that you uh run into when you play online where uh uh where somebody raises 24 book lines preflop to isolate and open. That classic scenario. Look at you. Good stuff. When is this? Oh, the day after. Didn't learn my lesson the first day. This is the day after. God, be safe. Be safe. Oh, my God. Seven always coming. This guy was ahead of the times. This guy. Oh, my God. That, <laughs> you see, at this point, I wonder even if I know that this is a 50-50 preflop. 50 50 you know that's it's kind of it's kind of significant but you know doesn't really matter does please do not think that the fact that sevens have 55 percent here is good that i put him on ace king and i have a pair so i'm a slight favorite no 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 no. because if they have ace king they'll have aces kings queens jacks now granted ace king is 16 combinations Aces only six, kings only six. So if you try to compile a range, how you're doing against it, make sure that you know that against. You know, when you have like jacks that, or when you have queens, people say, well, I lose against two out of three hands, so I should fold. Not true, because ace king, uh, there's 16 combinations of aces and kings combined, only 12. If there's money in the pot, you know, the average, average, uh, stuff is the average money in the pot and the, the the equity that you're getting the pot odds is good enough to call so keep that always in mind like how many combinations of a hand people say well you could have jack 10 of hearts one hand you know what i mean so be mindful of that just a little uh just a little uh, jump in there um so yeah so this is obviously probably not the way i knew he had a king not the way to play sevens but good you see, I think that it's very bad for my mindset there. Is this the hand after? It is. Wait. 10.42 p.m. How the fuck? How the fuck do I rate them? How do I rate these hands from early in the year to later on in the year? And then... Oh, okay. It's an hour later. Jeez. I was like... I was Okay, so I was looking at this. I was looking at this, and I was like, how, how is this hand a minute earlier? But it's an hour later. It's 59 minutes later. So obviously, I've been doing well enough to, uh, sorry, to well enough to chip up here. We're going to put in a longer ace-king, obviously our favorite hand of the day. Min raise it. I mean, I'm not even going to say anything about this being bad or something. Actually, it's all right. People were so fucking terrible. Yeah, I mean, why not? You see, and now this this is what I mean. Look at what I'm doing here. I think I'm. This is the d day after the ace deuce hand. I have a big stack, so I'm up a lot of money. I think this is the first time I'm playing with like three k stacks supposedly because it's still fucking June. So this is the first time I had this much money. Look at how I'm playing this hand. I don't think this is tilt at all. I actually think that I'm quite calm here. I actually think that I'm quite calm. I don't, obviously, hope it works out. Oh, the straight draw. Wow, favorite hand detected. I'm sorry, detective, what's going wrong here? Well, I, I had this hand yesterday and I it went pretty well, but no way this time. That's a 2k pot right there. I don't know, hoop cup chaser. I don't think this this is not this is not XDS Gur, the StarCraft legend. No, maybe it is, yeah it is. It is. I thought his name was Guillaume on Stars, but no, this is the Gur. XDS Gur, what a legend. Nice guy, too. Um, all right. Sorry, uh, I'm waiting for an important message. So, really nice. Look at us with a 4K stack now. Ball in. All right, so this is uh, this is actually a really bad sign. Um, I would not be surprised because there's we're going to have a Tilt Edition, guys. It's going to be in three episodes. It's going to be the 2005 Tilt Edition. Because there is 510 PLO. Yes, you heard it right. We're going to have 510 PLO in 2005. 1020 No Limit Hold'em. Some 1020 heads up. 
I was not ready for that shit, but I think I really think that I was just aiming at the stars. So we'll just see. We're gonna see. Um, we're gonna see how, what the time frame is on those hands, and we're gonna check out how those months went and stuff. And um, and I think it's also good if we do like an overview picture at the end of the year, how 2005 went, what I expect for 2006. So this is already when I started playing EPTs, right? So so crazy. It's one and a half years after I started playing. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. I, that's the one thing that I'm amazed. I not I'm not amazed at how fast I went through stakes, but I'm amazed that um, uh, that I that, that APTs were so early in my career. I always thought it was after a year or three, but went much faster than I thought. All right, next hand. Yes, a one half hour video income, and you know what I mean. Forty. So this was clearly just uh, the race size back then, which I'm fine with. You know, it's like. This this is dictated by time and metagame, so I'm not gonna say too much about forex and preflop. You definitely don't want to do that in these days anymore, because let me just close this fucking window because this guy's chopping his wood every day. All right, fucking Christ, man! How many trees does this guy have? Every all right i'm happy so um in these days you don't really want to do that anymore i got all kinds of drinks here because people play a little bit too aggro so they're gonna put more pressure on you so did you invest too much money um all right so this is probably gonna be a flat call because you know back in the day who would bluff? Why would you put all your money in with jacks? Call, that's good. Ooh. Ooh. You see, now, we go again to what we discussed previous time. Here, if he bets this turn, I like the shove. There's a lot of things he can call with. Honestly, against really good players or people who don't give a fuck, um, I think that people can call with a 10 as well a lot if you shove here. Of course, the jack's going to hit you sometimes, but... This queen nine gets there, jack nine, but jack nine probably flats, right? Jack nine probably flats. So uh, you can take all those middle strong hands out there. Jack 10, sure, but if, you know, I still think that it's a decent spot to shove. All right, I, you really, I really like shoving a lot more though, because if somebody has king, queen of clubs right now, they can just gonna call, and they're only gonna call if they smash you on the river, you know, unless it comes a jack of clubs or eight of clubs, obviously, but. They're only going to call if they smash you on the river. What if they have queens and they think, oh, I'm just going to peel one, see what he does on the river. And the river is a seven or nine or something like that. You know, what if he has ace queen and he just wants to peel? Because he gets, he gets three and a half to one. So you give, I almost give him four to one odds. Oh, yeah. So almost four to one odds. Oh, when they have like ace queen or something that could even think about calling it's not just not great i like that i raised the turn but we got to go all the way well mr uh, uh dava da Berna does it for us there you go so this is the hands that we wow that hurts that hurt looking at this is i don't know if you guys can read this but this can i show this to you guys that's the five this is a five, guys. <sighs> and that was the last hand that I played in June on on five ten. All right, next hand, cool. Um, ooh, I really can't wait to see when I start playing. Uh, when I start raising. The ooh, Stevie Bilarakis, one of the five ten legends, used to grind these stakes all the time. One of the people I really looked at when I was uh, when I was playing. Uh, Lower stakes. 3-6 used to be the highest. He always used to be there. Mr. Smokey. Really cool dudes. Ha! Huh. That's a good flop. 240. I like it. Check back. Check back? Check no! Alright, why I say check back is because... Okay. So let's talk about this. Especially in these days. Alright. So let's say... Let's say this is a bluff. Yeah? Think about that. Let's say I, fly, I have jack nine here. Jack nine of spades or something. Jack nine of hearts, jack nine of diamonds. At least one of them with a backdoor flush draw. That's important, right? 
So let's say I have those hands. Now, if we get called here, a lot of the time we're going to give up with a hand like Jack-9 or maybe something stronger even. If I want to have the option to bluff the river or when it comes a 9 or a Jack to just check it back and not always get shoved on, I need to sometimes check back the turn with another type hand. Let me say that again because I know that the, the info gets a lot. If you want to have easier situations on the river when you have a weak hand, that means you also have to have a strong hand there sometimes, right? Regulars are going to pick up on that shit. If you raise the flop here, bet the turn, let's say you bet 200 on a turn, shove the river. Anytime you have a 10 or a set of fours or whatever, or some bluffs, you know, regulars are going to pick up on that. And then every time I check behind here, let's say I have King Jack. King Jack, that's a perfect example. Let's say I have King Jack of Diamonds and I raise the flop. And I'm like, whoa, that's a lot of action now. The pocket's too big. Let me pot control one. And I check it back. And then they shove the river. You're like, uh, okay, now this is a really tough spot. You kind of want to make him insecure about that move, but also have some nutted hands on the river. That's why balance is so important. Most of the time when you're balancing, you're not really doing the best thing in a vacuum or in a specific situation. You're trying to make your life easier for all the hundreds of other times you have a different hand in that situation. So that's why, that's, that's why balancing is so important. I will say, because I know that a lot of you guys will watch these videos also for educational purposes, is that you play lower stakes. The lower you play, the less important balancing is. But you need to be aware of the concept. You need to know the concept of balancing before you start to deviate from it. Because otherwise you get to the highest stakes, you don't have it in your game, you don't have it in your head, and then you're going to get fucking murdered. So... You build groups of hands, right? So you have a different group of hands. I have a different group of hands for when I raise the flop and I check the turn. I have a different group of hands for when I raise the flop and I bet the turn. Make sure that in both those groups, they're strong and weak. Because otherwise, you become predictable. And then you become exploitable. So that's why people always talk about balancing. Balancing, the only thing that it means is that um, you want to have good and bad in the range. And it could be this much bad and that much good. Because you can alter your bet sizing as well, you know, to adjust that. So you can just lower your bet size. If you have a lot of good and a lot of bad, you need to bet very big. Because otherwise people can just call you because they get great pot odds. Which is why when you're polarized, you know, polarized means either really good, really bad. When you're polarized, you can't bet a, a middle, middle high bet. Because then people automatically profit. They get like three and a half to one, three to one on a call, even though you have 50% good, 50% bad. So at that point, you need to bet massive amounts, sometimes more than the pot. So um, that's a little bit more technical than we normally get, but I think it's important also. Also, it's kind of like, you know, you, you guys have to look at these series as kind of like Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter won, everybody's happy, everybody's eight, you know, fucking nothing happens. It's all nice. Then the last one gets really fucking dark. You know why? Because the audience that read the first ones is actually more grown up now and became a teenager. So that's what we're doing here. So the first few videos, we talk about the basic concepts like bet sizing, hand selection, all that stuff. But I think that as the series progresses, we can go a little bit deeper because people that watch the series just to see hands and showdowns still get what they see, any what they want to see anyway. But then also the people that um, check these for... Uh, strategy can also progress and get deeper in strategy you don't want to hear me talk about fucking you know uh, flat calling with a set on the flop because otherwise oh no so strong for 80 videos so we're gonna go deeper and deeper um yeah cool so i really would have liked to check here that's what i wanted to say cool so uh smoky raises and we're gonna be up against a 10 <laughs> Nice, nice, bra. All right, so big, uh, big setup for him there. Um, but yeah, I think we said enough about aces. Wow, I haven't seen aces in a while. <laughs> That's such a whiny thing to say, even though I don't mean it that way. Soros, Rev Br, he won the he won a milestone hand once. God, if if that memory is ever if that if that's the correct memory, yeah, I think he did. Hmm. He won a 50k milestone hand, I remember that. We both played like 1-2 or something. Crazy. Um, but Ivy used to play a lot. 
Weird dude. Soros, one of the first aggressive players. Um, so really cool to see those names. Uh, this looks like a hand that could happen today, honestly, with these sizings and stuff. So, okay, it's not the board you want to see with ace high with aces. Um, of course, it's a it's a good flop, but uh, you got to be a little bit careful um, because hands like ten nine, ten eight all have close to thirty thirty percent or more against you, more actually. So, uh, when somebody shows, you just gotta pay it off, though. Of course, kings. Wow. Ace first kings, nice. Uh, pretty crazy. Well, not really crazy, but kind of. Yeah, you know, you have to be a little bit careful with kings on this flop because at least, at least my hand, I still beat kings. He loses against aces. He blocks king queen. You know, that's that's all pretty big. He blocks king jack, king ten, bluff value bet. So it's, kings is not a great hand to have on this board. Seven eight, dare I say. Oh, I can't wait to see when I start raising this kind of shit. We've kind of done that uh, though as well. Let's let's uh, let's do a time marker again. Yeah, okay, this is August. So I definitely started playing more aggro later in the year, which we saw in the three six hands, which were all from November and stuff. So here I'm still really feeling out uh, feeling out these stakes. Looks like I had a nice little few days of grinding though. A lot of these hands are from uh, Jesus. Well, a lot of these hands are from. Uh, Oh, you know what happened? Did I, I don't know if I told the story last time. I don't know if I told the story last time. Fuck, I don't want to double tell it, but all right. If you see a weird, if you see a weird cut right now, like a jump, then uh, the editor will have found out that I have told it uh, once before. Okay, so I think I told this before. Whatever. Okay, so I think this is. This is right before EPT London. So I qualified for my first EPT, which was EPT London in 2005. That's season two of the EPT. I don't even know what season they are right now. So they were on Eurosport on TV. I've always wanted to play those. And um, I was super excited. And then uh, I got Helen Gold got hacked on MSN. And this guy actually made this whole site, a discussion forum, and he started talking to people on Helen's MSN, saying like, hey, I made this really cool site. We should start discussing strategy there. Uh, with all of us and uh, and he like picked his the way he talked and everything and i was like oh cool that sounds great you know i thought it was cool to be a part of as well because there was going to be some high stakes players in there so then he made the site and i i registered an account there and i used the same password as i did for msn so the guy i went to london from london i couldn't log into my account um uh and I wanted to I wanted to just check email to be on MSN for like a few hours. So I went to an internet cafe. Yes, it's that long ago. And I couldn't log in. I was like, wow, I can't believe it. it's so weird that I can't log in. So I I went to play DPT. I got back home and then I got a call from Pokestars and they said, there's something weird going on with your account. Don't worry. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to lock it now. Call us when you're home and we'll get it sorted. Um I went home, I realized I couldn't log into my MSN. I checked my other, po other poker sites, I played on like five different sites. Every single fucking site, every single fucking site had the person change my cash out details, change my password, even some some sites. I don't, I, I it's too long ago to specifically burn sites for it, so I'm not gonna mention them because you know that's not the kind of point I'm driving across. There was one site who let the person change their name, their email, the cash out details, their phone number. And I tried to contact that site to say that my my account was hacked and there was $5,000 in it. And they sent me an email back saying, this is not your account. Fucking crazy. Um, this is actually, this also is the point where I started playing uh, almost 100% on PokerStars, which is, I tell this, I've said this a lot on the stream where something really important happened and Pokestars was the only one who's, who stood up for that and who detected it because they had the best security and still do. So um, this is uh, one of the big reasons why I became so loyal to Stars. Um, I lost, I had a 30k bankroll. I lost about 25k, a little bit more um, from this. So this is actually the reason why I'm playing 510 now and I start playing 2-4 after this because I had to rebuild. Uh, pretty tragic. Uh, they they borrow money from people on an MSN. Uh, like nowadays, whenever somebody asks you over the internet for a lot of money, you always ask, um, "What did that move? What, what was the movie we went to see in Vegas that one time?" Or 
uh, when I talked to you that time, what did, what did we talk about? You know, like these real life references that uh, people can't really know about. So you can check that way or you do like face chat or whatever, you know, to confirm. Um, but back then it was really uncommon. So I kind of I kind of took the responsibility for it, too. So I paid off a lot of money. Whereas now it's your own responsibility. If somebody on Discord would ask me, hey, can you send me 5K? And it's a guy I know. It's up to me to make sure that the guy is legit. You know, it's my own risk. But back then, I paid a lot of debt off. Funny little story, though. Uh, then I'll move on. Funny little story is that... Uh, uh, so this all happened. I paid everyone off. I barely had any money left except what was on stars. Um, and even I had to send a big chunk of that to people to settle the MSN debts and stuff. So I was telling this story when we were playing indoor football and Teddy Wong, who's also a legend, he just played so much and you know, he's uh Lauti's Lauti's older brother, Lauti's the PLO God. And um so Teddy Wong listens to the story and he's like, Oh wait, but you you oh he's like oh okay yeah i sent you two thousand dollars as well i was like what he's like yeah i already thought it was so weird that you talked to me in english and that i and then you had to send it to me on a different account on a different site i was like yeah i'm not paying that one back because that one is kind of stupid <laughs> so but yeah that was a big pretty big period in my life that actually kind of destroyed me because i was crushing right before i went to ept london i won the five rebuy the 10 rebuy the 100 rebuy three days in a row um, then I won uh, EPT London seat and my bankroll went from like 6k to 30, 35 something. So um, that was pretty brutal. So that's that's why see, it's so fucking cool to have the whole timeline in my head. I hope, uh, well, I do know that you guys enjoy following it too. But this part of the series is actually what's the coolest for me is because I, I you know, after this whole series, I can pretty much paint you a timeline because now I actually sleep at nights and stuff. So I actually remember things. Um, Cool. So, raise preflop. Go to three bet. We lead it out. Don't. Oh no, we check all. All right. Either is fine. And we're gonna make it 230, 270. All right. Nice sizing. And we get called, and the river's an ace. You know what? We talk about value cutting a lot, right? Normally, I would say, oh, god damn it. If I just put in 300 more, then uh, it's still a pot size bet, and he's all in. But this ace is actually really bad for the type of hands that he has because he's gonna have a lot of kings queens jacks and 10x here so i actually really like not going full size here um, because this would also work well with bluffs and he just puts it in for us anyway because he has two pair bad decision senor because i'm not calling this i don't think i'm calling this with six five or something so all right nice hand though as you can see i took the sets out <laughs> boats are still in oh yeah oh we got it boys let's go this is a classic scenario jesus christ why don't you bet pot all right so here's a flush right yeah all right um i think this is really the kind of decision where i'm people make it so easy here people make it so easy because they raise the flop they call 270 and then the turn is the only draw that gets the the only draw that's on the board gets there. So at this point you can just assume, all right, they have it, and then boom, and then you just bet close to pot. So I think that I did a pretty good, pretty good uh, um, job of kind of finding, figuring out if people had it and they were just gonna go for it anyway. Wise, that's a definitely a name I remember. Little La, he had the baby picture. God, that's such an annoying fucking picture. Uh oh, we got min rays on the flop, boys. Uh oh, no, what? No, this looks pretty strong. Please don't shove. Oh my god, please don't pay it off. Oh, <laughs> yeah, nobody saw that one coming, guys. Nobody saw that one coming. Nice lead on the river. Nice lead. Oh, stands. Why make it so difficult for yourself? Did I just think I was debating him here or something? I don't know. I think that's a pretty clear mistake. I don't mind check calling all the way. The bets are pretty small too. Min raise, pay off half pot. This is all completely standard. And I like he would have probably bet 250 or something. Would have been have to have to have been right one out of four times. Easy, easy call. Instead, I just lose the maximum. Too bad. Too 
fucking bad. Deuces? <laughs> Alright, um... I will tell you guys, and I'm very curious how this hand is gonna go. Always check that. Reggie, Empire! Empire 2000. Really good player. Roman. His name was... Roman. Reggie was also a regular. Hundreds? Why not? We have a flush draw, right? Oh my god. Get fucking lucky. Why Why not you shove? I don't understand what's up with these fucking rickety dickety amounts. Kings. Oh, that worked out. This is obviously very bad. Um, this, this is a very good example. Look at the deuce like swagging it up there. Pow. Pow. I'm gonna derive my deuces from this one. Pow. Um... This is obviously a very, a very shaky situation because let's say, you know, um, they don't have, let's say they don't have uh, uh, a pair on the flop. If they have a pair, you're trailing still anyway. It's going to be close. Yeah, so you're 60-40. God, I'm so happy that I'm actually behind. Imagine if it was like 60-40 for me, I'd be like, oh. I need to reconsider my career. Um, so I'm already I'm already 40, 60, and this is best case scenario, right? I mean, okay, let's say best case scenario is he has ace queen of spades. But if they have ace queen of spades and they bet the flop, they're very likely to bet a club. Can I really, if the turn is a jack of clubs and they just bet, can I really call it off with the deuce of clubs? All the other clubs counterfeit me on the river, uh, meaning that if the turn is a jack of clubs and the river is a queen of clubs and he has ace queen of spades, we chop because we both have a, a, a flush queen to three. The deuce doesn't play. There's a 50% chance if somebody has over cards that they have a club in their hand. Those hands are a favorite against me. Even kings here is a favorite. This is just, there's no upside to this story. Got incredibly lucky here. There's just no upside. Yeah. 2k pot though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get fucked. Uh, let's see. I want to I wanna check the timeline too. So, alright. So this is still... Yeah, I really grinded these stakes. This is August. Man, it makes me sad. Yeah, and then there's a jump to uh, November after. But next... All, almost all these hands are going to be from uh, September. So I really grinded the shit out of these stakes. Hold him in now. We got fucking Tom Dwan. There you go. That is so funny to see. Durr, ladies and gentlemen. You see, this is all... Everybody played these stakes. We've had Viffer, fucking Durr, everybody. Dan Smith, everybody playing this. This was just the place to be. So this is my first ever clash with Durr. Oh, fuck you, I'm gonna call you Tom Dwan. Uh, God damn it, always fucking lucky, this guy. Always fucking lucky, this guy. Look at my fucking hands. For, well, you know, slightly lucky, this guy. Look at my fucking hands. God damn it. I really like the fact that I bet the turn big and then call it off, though. Because, as you can see here, on the turn with 32%, you see? Look at the pot odds, 26%. So, it's a good call. Only 26% to call. Good. People sometimes don't get that because there's so much money in the pot. Look at what we fucking invested in the pot. God damn it. Fucking Durr, man. That's hilarious, though. Uh, Durr still. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Please just call it here. Oh my god. You see, this is what I fucking hate. This is what I hate, because this is this is just bad strategy. Alright, if they raise here, what do they have? They have a strong hand or they have nothing, right? What do they have? They have a strong hand or they have nothing. Let's get rid of all the nothings and keep the strong hands. Yeah, you deserve to get fucked and you do. Bye-bye. This is just... Appetite for destruction. That's what I would fucking call this. Please just flat call here, ladies and gents. Don't try to make your life easy by raising or some shit. What's the what's the purpose of this race? You in the blue sweater. Yeah, I don't know either. 
has no purpose. And what what is the purpose of this call? Oh well, you could have flush draws. Yeah, great. You should have should have just made money on that on the river. Fuck. Oh man, waste so much money here. If you just call the 180, if you call the 180, <clears throat> the pot's gonna be 900. He's gonna bet like 400 on the river, especially on this fucking river. On this fucking river, he's gonna bet like 200 a check. Just save yourself. A lot of money. <clears throat> you save yourself like 500, 600 bucks. And I'm not talking about like always having, wanting to minimize losses, right? That's not what it's about, but wh where's the upside? You know, I'm not saying, I'm not mentioning the money because there's no upside, but where's the fucking upside? I don't see an upside. So, you know, I don't mind, I don't mind wagering money, obviously, but there has to be an upside. Oh, limping under the gun. Did I just limp call this preflop? Yeah, okay. I, yeah, okay, I can get down with this. <laughs> Fuck you, Bill Ivy. Yeah, no fucking way, mate. Oh, me and this guy tangled so much. Look at this stack. Oh my god, I was high on fucking life back then. Alright, so that hand is pretty well played. Um, I don't really like limping. <clears throat> Definitely don't suggest it. GTP. Also, uh, a regular, I think. Oh no, that was Q Q P three 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 or something. All right, clearly gonna call call call. Turn is the nuts, and we hit it. So we can just go through that one. You know, it's kind of hard for me to weed those out. So, but it happens like once every twenty hands. So, it's not a big deal. Even though we have like a really nutted hand, it's still really interesting to see how I play this. All right, Lunga Vitu pretty much tells us he has something as usual in these fucking games. People make it so easy made it so easy people don't make it easy anymore you barely even see fun players do this shit oh great so two big setup hands there a lot of limping last few hands alexa martov obviously also a legend played very high how the fuck is this pot gonna oh beautiful oh yes do three look at this this is just a... God, I love these overbet situations. Grim poker. Ugh. Oh, no! Alright. That's actually... No, that's a friend of mine. I was confused. Wait. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm very confused between two people. Between a friend of mine... And between the guy that used to just button steal people's blinds, where he would get a free button and he would only place three buttons on all the fucking tables. All right. <clears throat> so di disregard that statement. Don't catch me on that saying that, you know. 2020. So this guy pretty much says, hey, I have something. And we just say, well, do you have something that's worth $800? And he says, yes, I have the deuce. This is just classic. I really like the way I exploited um, people who did this kind of shit. Uh, so I think that one of the best things from 2005 is if somebody gave me a piece of information about the strength of their hand saying, hey, I have something decent, let's put some money in the pot. I just reply with, let's put all the money in the pot. And it pretty much, there's very little situations uh, that we see where that actually backfired. Who that? Rude. Cool. Always have to check the names, man. Oh. All right, this 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 is trouble. So flop everything standard. The turn check min raise. It says I don't give a shit that I can go to the river for this money. I want to raise, and I want to raise the minimum. So I also don't care if you call. That's pretty much what a turn min raise says, guys. You'll see. You'll see how fucking strong this hand is. It's always something like this. Nice river. Nice river. Don't really mind the call of the min raise though, you just have to be careful. I think the biggest mistake you can make after calling a min raise on the turn is to uh, to follow through with making light calls on the river. Alright. It's decent. It's decent. And I just shove. I don't think that somebody's gonna fold after this. But, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, I'm doing all right against kings, against aces. I'm doing a little bit poorly, but it's just 
I don't know. You guys are going to be very grateful that you that I muted there. Wow. Aces. 39% still. Wow. Oh, why did I say I'm doing bad against aces? What the fuck? An ace is not an out? God. I'm getting bad, man. I'm getting worse. GG. Uh, yeah. You know what? I, I don't mind. I don't mind to shove. I don't mind to shove, but you need... You need at least full equity, and I don't think if somebody bets 150 against three others that they have full equity. That was That's what it's about, right? If you're going to shove a semi-bluff, meaning that you don't have anything yet, but you could have, so semi-bluffs are like shoving flush draws, straight draws, everything, you need at least somebody to have full equity. Otherwise, it's way better to just flat with the draw. If I have 40% to beat aces, why not just check all, you know? The only problem with this hand also is that if you hit, you're probably not going to make money. Um, because, you know, it's a one-card straight. Especially if the deuce comes, then anything makes a straight, so. Alright, so, well, not my best played hands. Start fucking raising these hands. Uh, rounders as well, last than two. Oh, nobody? See, now this is different. This is different. When you check all with this hand and the turn comes a three or an eight, especially when it's an eight, your hand is really disguised. So there's much more potential for this hand to just flat it. Wow, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Doing everything right, huh? <laughs> yeah, I like it. Turn bet is very small. Uh, it also kind of says that people are really looking to bet or protect, but then going to check the river back a lot. Especially those days. Please don't fucking do that. Nice. Five eights. Interesting bet sizing on the turn. Obviously, the Jin card for us makes him a, makes him a two pair as a straight. Very nicely done. Yeah, I mean, there's there's diamonds or straight draws, so uh, I don't see myself folding this hand. It's probably gonna go all in here. Oh, look at this! Interesting. Aha! I mean, I still kind of have to call. Ah, oh, damn it. I don't mind this as much, though. All the draws miss. I think if he gets with it, let's say he has like ace, deuce, or ace, three of diamonds. I honestly think there's a pretty big chance of just checking the river. Because they're a bit a bit afraid. Then all of a sudden, they're like afraid that you have something. They're like, oh, I better check, you know, now that I can actually win. Which is fine. I don't mind this, though. Just sucks. Also, the turn, the turn is just kind of shitty there because the turn kind of says, "All right, so fives are almost never happening. Nine fives not really a possibility anyway. Um, five four is less likely. All that stuff. So the five is, sorry, the five is such a good uh, card for my um, for my hand." All right. Next, next, next. Queen 10 of spades. What a pretty hand. Preposterous again. We've seen him in the last few. The takeover. Fucking Nick Schulman. Oh my god. All the legends coming out now. Oh, that's not the takeover, actually. This is a the different takeover. <laughs> this this is the guy that had to go through his poker career online getting cursed at for pretending to be somebody else, even though he probably just liked the name. <laughs> it's not Nick Schulman. Nick Schulman is a takeover with just a regular A. We saw him in one of the last episodes, though. So, 60, 180. That's obviously nice. We call. I like it. Please just flat. Oh, yes. You got to give aggressive players the rope they deserve. Now we're just going to call here, I assume. Call. Queen deuce. Wow. Queens versus queens. Look at this betting pattern, though. Very, uh, very aggressive. I like it. This is that polarized thing that I was talking about, right? It's like, what check raises this board? And bets three times. Think about that. What check raises this board and bets three times? No jack X. It's pretty much a queen. A queen, a full house, or nothing. So, then we go back to the spectrum. Really shitty hands. Or let's say, really, really shitty hands. Really good hands. If there's nothing in between here. So, it's uh, pretty much 
King 10, buses straight across to trips and full houses. There's nothing in between that we bet. That means that we have to bet big. Otherwise, it's too easy for people to call. So I really like his bet sizing here. Because let's say we're on the river here. Let's say he bets 600. Yeah, then the pot would be 1800. I would have to call 600. I would have to be right one out of four times. With that scale. That's pretty much just an automatic call, right? But what he does is bet a little bit bigger. Now it gets a little bit more iffy. It's still pretty hard. Uh, he probably should have sized up a little bit more even. Even though this is a massive bet. Um, but, you know, uh, I think especially for back then, he did a really, really, really awesome job in this hand with the sizing. Um, it doesn't really matter that he loses. Uh, so that's the way you have to look at it. You just, in these days, you just have to fire like 1300 here, 1200, something like that. Because then all of a sudden, I need to be right one in three times or better. And that makes all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. So big pot there. Nice little setup. We're going to flat with it. It's no point in raising. Preposterous does though. Flat. 290. Look at this guy's bet sizing. Oof. I mean, when somebody plays like that, you can't really just always give him credit, you know? <laughs> oh, you see? Look at how aggro this guy played. I really love that though. Like, this is so fucking hard to play. What do I do? Turn a 9. Because if he shoves an 8, he shoves a 9. Turn a 9. I just fold, right? Really, really, really. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. I remember playing hands against him. It was always crazy. I loved it, though. We played a lot of marginal hands against each other. Really good flop. Double gut shots, meaning, you know, we have two gut shots. Because if, if this was a nine, we would have, you know, whatever, double gut shot. The three and a seven are both gutters. Not, you know, it's not fucking poker for dummies. The guy's a smart hold. That is not a hold. That is a 2k disaster. I mean, they have 20% though. 23. 23% on the turn, so. It's still gonna happen one out of four times. Always remember that. You know, it sucks. It's very expensive, but you should be able to handle losses like this. Otherwise, you should play lower. So, just kind of a setup hand there. Uh, let's see. Is that a, yeah, that was hand 28. All right. Dazzy 2004, six sticks. Wow, that was also regular because he hit that's aces. Six sticks. He had like, he had a picture of a school board with aces drawn on it. I remember so vividly. Wait, did I raise this under gun? Good for you. Good for you. I'm not saying you should raise this in a seven handed table under the gun, but it's good to see that that stuff started happening. We got rewarded with the nuts on the turn. Small, small, big. Shove. All right. Thank you, Jack Ten of Hearts. Ace Queen. Interesting. Interesting. The problem with this hand, from his perspective, is that you pretty much try to. You pretty much say that you have a stronger hand than you actually have. Now, what's the problem in that? What's the problem when you either have a bluff or a strong hand, but the strong hand you represent is much stronger than what you actually have? He's pretty much saying I have a set or a flush when he shoves the river there. Um, the problem with that is that it's harder to get paid off. So you're going to get called by hands that beat you a lot and not you're not going to get paid off light because you just represent such a strong value hand there. And it's also really hard for you to be bluffing because you raise the river against the guy that raised pre-flop, bet the flop turn and river. So it doesn't really get more clear than a flat call there on the river. Just got to take it. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. 40. Easy call. Nice. Good to see. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind that. Ah, nice. I don't mind that, especially against his bet sizing. You can just get the money in. This guy just blows up the pot. If he bets 80, you can definitely flat sometimes or raise, but whatever. But you can also make a case for if he does bet 220 that he's probably shoving the turn. But this is also another, another thing of like, I have something. I want to protect it because it's a dangerous looking board. So it's just easy to get the money in. Easy to get the money in, boys and girls. It, the all-ins used to be closed back then, so you would never see the hands during an all-in, which is different. It's different. It was different back then. 
because now you can always sweat it right you can still turn it off but everybody sees the hand earrings all in and it's easier too when you're multi-tabling otherwise you'd have to look up the hands and shit and <laughs> it's funny though it's so funny like these small differences all right so it's actually kind of interesting because if you look at the total trajectory that i went through in all online poker it's actually very important that we've had you know that we saw this and that we that we saw that because this is all still august let me see well, those were three hands in a row where both our whole cards were hearts. Wow. We still have hands from uh, September after this. So all these September hands is all... Uh, that's all uh, right before I went to EPT London. And of course, the I got hacked. Well, not really hacked, but you know the guy did it very smartly. Um, and um, we lost a lot of money. I had to start all over. Which is kind of s sick because in the summer, apparently, I made a lot of money. Started winning tournaments. Um, those tournament reviews we will also do by the way um, it's gonna be really funny I don't think that those hand histories are in there though I mean I can check um, yeah I'll check that another time if they're in there I'll discuss them but I'll go over like old tournament wins and stuff uh, no problem because that's pretty fun to look at too especially now that we play tournaments on stream um, I'm gonna be able to uh, cut these years up and also do some cool shit in between. Not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to do something really cool after 2005. Because uh, I have a pretty busy schedule the next few weeks. Um, so we're going to have to see. I think we have two, vid three videos left for 2005. So we might be able to do it. Um, and record something at the start of July. I should have just moved to Vancouver. Because we're going to move from Victoria to Vancouver. And uh, maybe I can do it from there. Um... But yeah, this is getting really interesting, especially when you see people like Durr and stuff appear, you know, all those guys. And I mean, this is just 2005, guys. We're going to make these series up until, I mean, well, actually, it's just going to go through all the years because I'm going to go over all the PLO hands as well. Like, why not have like a cool PLO series on this? Three years of PLO elite grinding. Uh, that's going to be really sick to look at. So um, thank you again for watching. Um, Thank you for commenting as well. Like I said last time, I've been getting back on the comment reply grind. Uh, it's really interesting, really motivating to see all the comments. It's a nice warm-up for these videos as well. And it's a, I have a good idea of what happened, what you guys thought about it. So please keep doing that. Please click the like button. Please subscribe as well. Um, the more you guys do that, the more videos come out. Because it just helps me. It motivates me too. Because it's just positive feedback. It says, hey, I like this video. And based on likes, we go, uh, we decide what direction we go. If these videos have 40 likes and 20 dislikes and there's no comments and, you know, then it's probably something that's going to die out. So uh, all I ask from you is to just give feedback that way. And it does help me as well. It's a very easy way to support the videos. It gives them more reach and stuff. So I highly appreciate that. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Keep crushing. Grind well. Don't lie to yourself and build that shit for the long term. Peace out. Peace <laughs> out.